Welcome to my presentation on Google Earth. My name is Wendy Goss. I'm doing this for EDT 601 at the University of North Alabama. What is Google Earth? According to Google Earth website, Google Earth allows you to travel the world through a virtual globe and view satellite imagery, maps, terrain, 3D buildings, and much more. I also learned that Google Earth originally was called Earth Viewer 3D. What must you have in the classroom? Well, because Google Earth is something that you find on the internet, you will need a computer or computers in the classroom, and a computer lab would be great also. For a whole group, you will need a projector, and a Mimeo or smart board would be helpful also. If you do not have a Mimeo or smart board, then a projector screen or a whiteboard will be great. There are recommended computer requirements. These aren't the basic requirements. These are the actual recommended requirements. As you see, I have put PC and Mac um, side by side because a lot of people use Macs now. Everything is the same except for the operating system and the CPU and maybe a little bit of wording. The operating system for the PC, you would need a Windows XP, Windows Vista, or Windows 7 with a Pentium 4 2.4 gigahertz plus or AMD 24XP plus. For a Mac, you would need Mac OS by 10.5.2 or later with a dual core Intel Mac. RAM, hard disk, network speed, graphic, and screen are all the same except for the wording on screen. In PC, for 1280 by 1024, you will see it called 32-bit true color. In a Mac, you will see it called millions of colors. There are some problems that may arise, some technical problems, especially with the computer, the internet not working, or your projector, the bulb may be out or a connection may not be correctly plugged in. And with this being a tech savvy world, some students may struggle with computer technology because they're not as tech savvy as others. Some networks may restrict the use of Google Earth. I know in my school district, we are not able to use Google Documents or Google Calendar because it is connected to a personal email, which is Gmail. I am hoping that we can get our technology coordinator to allow us to use Google Earth because I think this would be very beneficial to every grade. Uses in the classroom. Since I'm a third grade teacher, I went to the Alabama course of study for science and social studies. And objective social studies number one said to locate the equator, prime meridian, prime meridian, Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn, and lines of latitude and longitude on maps and globes. Also, social studies objective number two said to locate the continents, major rivers, mountain ranges, and geographical features of Earth. Social Studies Objective number 11 says compare maps of the past to those of the present, which we do in Map and Globe Skills. Science Objective number 2, use technology to gather, analyze, and interpret data. Science Objective number 38, learn the phases of the moon and day and night. And Science Objective number 40, learn about constellations and star patterns. Objectives number 38 and 40 under science we do in our study about space. Where will you use it? Well, first, I would begin in the classroom. I would use the projector and the Mimeo or smart board, or if you don't have one, the projector screen or whiteboard, to show how to navigate around the site, around Google Earth. The next lesson or lessons, I would take the kids to the computer lab and let them play around with the different programs 
that I have introduced. You could also use Google Earth during research time for the kids. They may be researching a planet or the moon or other features of Earth, and this would give them information on these particular features and also give them a more detailed picture. How does it work? Well, the best way is to go to www.googleearth.com and look at the how-to videos. It goes through each section of Google Earth and shows you how to use it. You can explore through the website at all the different possibilities, and then you need to download Google Earth. We are going to look at both the website and the downloaded version of Google Earth. Now we're going to visit www.googleearth.com. This is what will show up when you first get to googleearth.com. You have your tabs across the top, Home, Explore, Download, which you will do after you learn how to use Google Earth. Learn, here's your tutorials of how to do different things in Google Earth. Connect to the community and of course the help button. As an educator, I found most helpful at the bottom of this home page for educators. Here, Google Earth for educators, it gives us the ability to use Google Earth for lesson plans, tutorials and tips, and for the community. We're going to click right here where it says visit the Google Earth for educators community. And see here you, we have listed classroom resources, talk teacher to teacher, student work showcase, tutorials and tips. Also inside tutorials and tips is an interactive game to help teach the basics of Google Earth to your students and of course yourself. Then there are Google Earth programs and what educators are saying. You see quotes about Google Earth in the classroom and share how you use Google Earth at your school. We're going to go to Classroom Resources. Here it shows you how the students can use Google Earth, how you as the teacher can use Google Earth. Then you have features for your classroom. These are just some of the popular features. There are a lot more features than the ones listed here, but I'm going to go more in depth with Fly to the Sky when we get to the actual downloaded version of Google Earth. I want to show you this, View Historical Imagery. You can look at a city. This, for example, where my cursor is, this is Las Vegas in 1950, and then this is Las Vegas in 2010. And you can see the difference of not only the city, but also the earth, if you were to zoom out and see the earth uh, at different periods of time. Also, you can find the Latin long. I know in third grade we learned latitude and longitude. And it tells you how to control it. And it would look like this, and you can find a specific location with the coordinates. And you can teach the kids the coordinates. So let's go back. Also, you can view 3D buildings. Uh, draw and measure. This actually has a map aspect to it. You can draw paths and measure the paths. You can also draw polygons and find the area and perimeter, which is also a third grade concept. And it shows you how to do the different forms and the paths. And also, if you look in this, they've made it the path stand out. It shows you how to do that also. Also, 
that's the elevation. So maybe you could go outside and they could run around the playground and then you could come back inside and download that from uh, a GPS and then show them their path that you took. Let's close this out. Then the students can create a tour. Uh, I thought this was real neat. They can actually create a tour and share it with their classmates. And the example they use is to highlight all the major rainforests affected by deforestation. And that is one of the objectives we do in third grade is we do rainforest tours and we talk about the problems and solutions of rainforests. And so this would be a great idea for the group that does problems and solutions. They could go to this particular part of Google Earth. Okay. We're going to go to projects for my subject. And of course, you'll find ideas on popular methods to implement Google Earth. Then lesson plan library, where you can submit your own lesson plans for review. And then, of course, there are lesson plans already found here. Here's a welcome to Google for educators. It's recent projects and news. We have YouTube, different activities going on. Doodle for Google. Search resorts at every reading level. Gives you other websites that you can go to and explore. Classroom activities, tools for your classroom, classroom posters. Go back. All right. We're going to go to the actual. Once you download it, this is what Google Earth will look like. You have your map. These are your tools over here, your navigational tools. This is eye level. So if you want to look at okay. Also, this rotates the globe around. And of course, this zooms in and out. Okay. Up here you will see a toolbar of different things. And in your how-to videos it will explain what each of these are. You can look at the earth, the sky, Mars, moon. We're going to look at the sky. This is neat. It shows the sky right above you, wherever your computer is, and zooms in in detail. what is above you and you can click on the different icons and it'll tell you what each thing is. Each thing, each symbol stands for something else. You can also zoom out You can see images by a Hubble telescope. You can also see constellations and so forth, dealing with the sky and space. You can go back to Earth. And I can click on weather. And I can look at the clouds, radar, and conditions of our Earth. all over and I can zoom in if you look closely you'll see like a little yellow dot I'm gonna click to zoom it in you can see that it shows the weather around but also right here there's looks like a little thumbtack you can actually 
place mark, that's what it's called, certain locations. And for example, this is my house that I have place marked. I can double click that and it's going to zoom right in on my house. And there's my house. So I could do some measuring, maybe a path, and do some measuring of how far maybe my house is from the school. I can also zoom in and go lower. Down to the street level. Can zoom in. Get right down to the street level. When it turns around, so you're at the street level. Google Earth is amazing. It can do all different kinds of things. It's so many things it can do that I could talk on and on and on. I hope you're able to download Google Earth at your house or at school and get in there and play with it and then allow your kids your students to get in there and play with it and learn what it's capable to do, uh, of doing and also learn what you can use it for in your classroom.